The advice coming here talking about fire safety, of course. Now, in the span of one week, we have seen especially deadly apartment fires, one in the Bronx, one in Philadelphia. Both of them killed at least a dozen people. And uh, while it may just be a coincidence that they happened within a week of one another, it's not a coincidence that they happened at this time of year. So we want to talk now to uh, the Connecticut Fire Academy Fire Service instructor, Alan Zygman, who took the time to join us today. Alan, thank you for joining us. How are you today? Thanks for having me. Uh, glad to have you here. Uh, we just a few minutes ago were talking about space heaters because it looks like that was uh, at least the cause of the fire in the Bronx. Uh, what can you tell people about what they need to do just to make sure that space heaters are not going to be causing fires? Well, the rule that we always use with space heaters is give space heaters space. And the key is you have to keep anything that is combustible at least three feet away from any space heater. So bedding, curtains, furniture, anything at all that can potentially catch fire, you wanna keep at least three feet away. Another really important part about space heaters is that most of the new ones have a, a safety feature built in. So if they get tipped over or knocked out of position, they will automatically shut off. And that's something that's really important because if it does fall onto the ground, it can easily start a fire like on carpeting or other combustible materials. It's actually something that uh, it didn't start a fire, but we had a space heater knocked over in our house just within the past week because somebody tripped on the cord. What about keeping those cords in a safe place? Yes, the, the key is, is you don't wanna run cords necessarily underneath um, like rugs or something like that. Um, but you do want to try to keep them as secured as possible. Another important thing about the cords with space heaters is they're not designed to be run on an extension cord. They should be directly plugged in to the wall. Um, that's really important because many extension cords cannot handle the amount of uh, electricity that the space heater demands and can then the, then the cord itself can create a fire hazard. In that Philadelphia row house fire, it looked like there were smoke alarms there, but they were not working. What are the reminders for people? It used to be every time you change your clocks, you should be checking them or at least replacing the batteries. Now, though, a lot of them have those 10-year batteries. Uh, do you yeah. feel like that leads people to n not test them, or uh, does, does that change the guidance at all? Well, the, the important thing about a 10-year battery is that when the battery does start or when the alarm starts to chirp, it tells you the battery is low. Um, that's important because um, that enables you to just simply go out and get a new one. Because fire or smoke alarms and carbon monoxide alarms as well, they will deteriorate over time. So that's why they have a date stamped on them as to when they're manufactured. And we, re we suggest that people replace them at 10 years. However, even if you're changing the batteries religiously, it's still a really good idea to check all the smoke detectors in your home at least monthly. Just want to make sure that they're working. Smoke and carbon monoxide alarms are your best first warning, and you want to make sure that they're working all the time. Absolutely. It could have saved a lot of lives in the past week. Yes. Alan Zygman, thank you for taking the time to join us to uh, give us some reminders that we can never get enough. Yes, thank you very much for having me, and stay safe. We will. Thank you.